Hi there. My name is Doug Rupik. I'm a journeyman iron worker. I completed my iron worker's apprenticeship in 2002. I taught in the iron worker's apprenticeship for several years, and I'm currently welding faculty at South Seattle College at the main campus um, up on top of the hill. Um, I've been teaching online for uh, a few years, a couple of years now, uh, two, three, four, I don't, I don't remember. Um, but I've been teaching online for years. Um, and you say, how do you teach welding online? Well, you know, when we teach uh, our, our trades, not everything is done hands-on in a lab. There are times when we bring our students into the classroom and we talk about the trade, we have discussions about the trade, we watch videos about the trade. Um, that is the kind of stuff that you can put in an online environment. Um, and, and I will show you a couple of different approaches that I've taken uh, that may give you some ideas. Um, first, I'm going to log into Canvas here. Um, I use my email address and then I have um, typed in my password and hit enter. This takes me to the dashboard. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here to the class that I want, the first class I want to show you which is uh, my Welding Fabrication Technology 100 class, which is Welding Theory. And I have my class arranged by weeks. So I have uh, announcements at the top um, where I ask them to click this first. Thought I had that. Oh, click this second. Ask me anything. Okay, week one, week two, week three, week four, and so forth. So my whole class is arranged in a linear fashion. Um, first week is all safety, shop safety. This is a video from Sunbelt Rentals that I got off of YouTube. And it is how to assemble a rolling scaffold and how to safely use it. And it's just a video I got off of YouTube and I've embedded it here and then the students take a quiz. I'm going to hit preview. The students would see take quiz. And it's just multiple choice. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to start hitting random answers. And um, true, false. And I've, I've written this quiz. I put it in there. And I told Canvas what the right answer is. And Canvas will grade it uh, for me. I don't have to look at all the quizzes and grade them. Canvas does it for me. And they submit the quiz and it comes up with a grade. So that's that's how I've done that. Um, another thing that I've done in my online classes is, um, you know, I've taken the uh, the lectures that I would normally give in class. And so here's chapter three, joint uh, welding, joint design, joint design and welding terms, part one. And I just the same lecture I would give in class. Welding joint design and welding terms. We're going to talk about terms, different joints, different weld. I've just created a video like I'm doing here with the PowerPoint um, that I would normally give in class. Um, so, and then I have this, I, I, I can some, sometimes I will have a little quiz after that. So the students will watch the video of me and then take a quiz with questions based on what I covered. Uh, sometimes it's a discussion where students will have to post in there like on Facebook saying, yeah, I watched the quiz. Sometimes I will have them make up questions about what was in the, uh, what was in the lecture or ask them questions about what was in the book uh, or have them make up questions about what they had read and have their classmates answer them. But I do this in an online environment. Uh, where in the past I used to do it in class. So it's the same course content. I have the same assignments um, that I used to have when I taught face-to-face -face in class. Uh, another thing that I put on here is I put, come on, where'd it go? I put, um, you know, writing assignments. So here is uh, one of the assignments. Uh, what are the four basic welding positions? What is a big influence on the design of weld joints? When measuring joint penetration, what's included besides the thickness of the base material? What are the five basic weld joints? 
And so the students have to enter the answers to this. Um, I have it set up to where they can download this as a Word document, print it out, write the answers in. I let them take pictures of that and send it to me. Um, they can also download it as a Word doc. They could create a Word doc just with the answers. They could do a text entry. There's, um, but again, I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, I have a, I've been doing this for a few years, and my stu our, our students tend to be more tech savvy than we are. Um, so I'm, they, they push me to learn new things. So, um, and then I have quizzes and um, you saw one of the quizzes I had. So anyway, that's one type of, that's my lecture class. Now, another thing that I've done is, you know, in welding lab, you know, we give welding demonstrations. Guys, this is how you do this watch me do this and I explain what I'm doing as I demonstrate it and then ask them questions about my technique and, and so forth. Um, what we have done is we have taken all of our welding classes, you know, our stick welding class, our MIG welding class, our oxyfuel welding class, our TIG welding class, pipe welding class, all that kind of stuff. And we have Canvas classes for those lab classes. And um, let's see, for example, uh, let's go to our 124, which is our MIG welding class. For all of our lab classes, we have specific assignments. Um, we have them do a lap joint. So they have to put a, a couple of pieces of steel together and weld those pieces of steel together in a lap joint. Well, I just happen to have found a YouTube video where they demonstrate that very thing and they talk about it pretty thoroughly. Um, you know, so the students, not only, uh, not only would they be able to see me in lab, but now they, they can see this online on their phone. So they watch my demo in lab, they see this as well. They have access to this. Now, um, this is a supplement to our lab class. Um, you may, you know, let's say that you teach automotive or diesel or uh, masonry, tile setting, I guarantee you there are videos on YouTube that demonstrate something that you teach. And there are good videos and there are bad videos. So I am sure that you, as an instructor, can watch a video and decide, is this a good video or a bad video? See, that's something you can do that your students can't. Whether you realize it or not, your students are actually looking on YouTube to find out more information about the class they're taking from you, if they're interested in your class. Um, so what we have decided is we've decided we will go and we will look at some of these videos and find the good ones and put the good ones in Canvas to benefit our students. Now, this is going to help us with this pandemic going on in that I don't have to spend as much one-on-one -on -one time with each student. Uh, I don't have to get as close. I can maintain uh, physical distance from our students because now they can see the same thing I would show them up close. Um, I don't feel threatened by this. I, I feel pretty secure as an instructor. And, um, and, and that has taken time. Okay, that's taken time. Uh, I can very easily see um, when I when I when I first started, I, I felt threatened by students going to YouTube, and I, I felt bad that they weren't coming and asking me questions. As instructors, we need to get over that. Um, our job is not necessarily to be the source of all information for them. Our job is to guide them in their learning experience. So, at any rate, these are a couple of different approaches that uh, we have taken uh, in the main campus welding program. Um, this is stuff that I had to learn uh, as, an iron, as an iron worker um, in the apprenticeship when I went, you know, 20 years ago in the, through the apprenticeship. They weren't real keen on teaching us digital, digital literacy. Uh, they taught us how to put a bolt in the hole and tighten it up with a wrench. They taught us how to weld. They taught us how to cut. They taught us how to hit things with a nine-pound beater. Um, this stuff is stuff that I've learned in the last few years. Um, takes a bit to learn it, uh, but it is very worthwhile, and I want to help you best I can. Anything I can help you with, get a hold of me through my email. Thank you for your time.